What is up guys, thanks for tuning in for another Destiny 2 build. Today, we're going to be focusing on one of the most interesting pieces of exotics in game, named Tommy's Matchbook, that deals double the damage the longer you fire the weapon, but also causes self-burn as you go. The weapon's mechanic is interesting as you are sacrificing something on your end for more damage at the risk of death, but the trade-off is considerably worth it if you know what you're doing. With this mechanic being quite risky for most content, I've created a way to counter the self burn so you can stay 100% at full health while maximizing the damage buff you get, and this will involve using the Sanguine Alchemy chest piece and using your rifts, and I mean a lot of your rifts, to get this working for you. Once we're done, you have a very powerful build for stacking damage as long as you can last, but you'll also have something worth using to use in PvP if you wish, as its overheat mechanic will push the weapon's TDK to an extremely higher rate compared to any other weapon in this category. So let's crack on and take a look at the subclass that we will be using, which will be the Bottom Tree Devour subclass for a consistent health regen per kill. This subclass is specifically designed for survival, and is a fan favourite one being used with the exotic Nezrak Sin. We won't be utilising Nezrak at all here, as I want to try something different instead. And when I mean different, I mean I want to combine this subclass with Sanguines and Tommies so I can use the Devour perk to proc a constant healing phase when using the Tommies overheat perk, which will negate the heat damage and then the Sanguines will allow my rift to stay longer per kill I create with it. This overall will allow flexibility for staying alive as long as possible, while also maximising damage. The rest of the perks will come in handy when the right scenario appears such as the Powered Melee, which will allow us to proc Devour instead of needing us to use our grenade, which is useful in close quarter fighting, and our super is great for collateral damage. For your grenades and rifts, I would recommend use the Vortex Grenades for its damage and duration, and then using the Healing Rift is a wise choice to use as well, so you can stay alive longer, but you can change this to Empowering if you feel you can survive much longer just using the Devour perk, and I tend to mix this up every now and then. For weapons, we will want to pair our exotic with a fast firing or heavy hitting secondary to complement the playstyle that we'll be going for. I will give you a few examples to this area, as this area can be customised to your own liking. For the primary, I've chosen to use the Heritage with Outlaw and Fresh, and it's a wonderful slug shotgun to use against any ad, as long as it's precision based. Although this weapon can't more specific damage perks like Kill Clip or Rampage, it can still pack a punch, which is capable of downing any type of enemies as long as you land a position hit or body shot, with either being very powerful against users. With 6 rounds in its base bag that can be increased via mods or its perks, it can do some great DPS against bosses, with prime examples taken from the Tanix raid and being a top contender for primaries to use. It's also become quite favourable for players to use in PvP with its generous base stats, but it's not something that will rival the Chaffron. My role does come with the perk fresh, which allows me to get a bit of super energy back and works similar to the bad juju and this will help with feeding back into my super and activating the berserker mod for a weapon buff damage to all those I face and repeat when necessary. For secondary, I'm using the Tommy's matchbook exotic, which was released quite a while back. This exotic AR acts in a similar manner, like the touch of malice that took the health away from you when you fired it, but would give you increased damage on the final round and would never run out of ammo until you killed yourself, literally. The difference here is that the Tommies doesn't outright kill you when overheat perk kicks in, which makes it slightly better to use all round. As we know the overheat perk gives us an increase in damage, the weapon is also very lethal when being hip fired solely on its own, to the point of it being highly recommended that you use it hip fired only, as the aim assist when being hip fired is around 81, which is incredibly noticeable and not something you'll ever see on other ARs. Basically the weapon acts like a Persuado SMG in AR1. This right here is what makes the weapon quite good to use in non end game content, as it's not only going to give you a large boost of damage when critical on health, but the hip fire titans makes it very useful in PvP, as no one would expect it. On top of that, its catalyst also grants your health back upon kills, which makes it slightly easier to use in some end game contents now, now that you have a constant source of free health. For heavy, I've chosen to use the interference grenade launcher with spike grenades for purple and full court. And this is the god roll you should always try and aim for when grinding for it, or any grenade launching game. Although some launchers can't actually get a full course at times, simply getting the fill prep and spike nade combo has always been the most easiest path to grind for. I will utilize my heavy against bosses or tanky ultras, and will ultimately combine this with either a backup mag to increase my weapons magazine, or use the boss bet mod for an increase in boss damage. 
Either ones are great choices as they both provide a damage increasement in some form. For the stats, you're going to want to have your recovery to be at the highest level throughout the whole build, so you can utilise your exotic weapon and chest piece more often. How much you go for will depend on what you consider is enough for you and what impede on your other stats, as we don't want to fully invest into one area too much and leave the rest up in the wind. I would recommend you aim for 80 for a recovery stat, as you get a cooldown of around 50 to 51 seconds, which may sound like a lot, but considering the other mods and perks that will be helping out as well, with reducing class ability cooldown, should narrow it down to around a 30 seconds instead. This is important as this will be the main area that will be heavily used when you're not devouring your own grenades. After that, the next section you should invest in is the intellect area, as we will be combining this and our super usage with the berserker mod. Aiming for around 40 to 50 should be suitable enough for the build, as we can get all the power via our master of Tommies on the Immortal Kills part that will further boost the cooldown of our super. I also recommend you stick around this level simply because A, this super isn't that great to use against multiple adds, so it can easily go to waste, and B, all the power will flow freely in most content, so you don't need to invest so much unless you're playing PvP. The rest of that should all hopefully be balanced out to around the 40 to 50 sections. Armor will be a mix of Soul and Void for the charge with lights we have. Main mods to have are Stacks on Stacks, High Energy Fire, and Taking Charge for a consistent boost in damage. Your Sanguine Alchemy Chest Piece doesn't need a specific affinity as it will only carry your High Energy Fire mod and Double Concussive Dampener mods. They also do not need a specific stat level or investment, but would recommend recovery if you can. So, here are all the mods we're going to be using throughout the build and how it all affects the build overall and then we'll go into the section of explaining how the build works. For the head, we got recovery, auto rifle ammo finder and stacks of stacks mod. Arm, minor resilience, overload rounds, auto rifle loader and supercharged mod. Chest, minor resilience, cacus of damage times 2 and high energy fire mod. Leg, resilience, better already mod. Insulation and taking charge mod. Bond, we have Recovery and the Berserker mod. Now, I've always wanted to play around with the Tommy's matchbook since it first came out, as its design, mechanic, and everything else around it really makes me want to test it out to its fullest extent, since exotics such as these are really rare to come across. Tommy's overheat mechanic allows us to increase our damage by times 2 the longer we can sustain it, and the usual best method for this is to roll Antium Warrig with the Titan and then go from there for an infinite ammo fed weaponry. The issue with the titan version is that there's not much healing options available in an instant to keep you afloat, unless you have the catalyst or if you have the better already mod for quick health regen the moment you pick up a orb of power. With this being thought through, I've taken the mechanic into large consideration and decided to build around it to negate the overheat damage but still make full use of the damage. Uh, utilizing the Warlock's Healing Rift and Atomic Hunger, we can keep our health at full while the Overheat mechanic kicks in, and as you can see, our Health Regen and Overheat perk are clashing with each other to retain the effects. While this is happening, our weapon's damage will be increased until we have to reload, but this will build back up quite fast once you're done. Alongside this, we have the Sanguine Alchemy Exotic that will be working alongside our Rift and extend our Rift duration as long as possible, as long as we can net majority of the kills. Now, this is useful as it allows you more freedom to move about and sustain risk for whatever section you're in, and also very helpful for your own team. With the Devour perk active, I can go run and gun to keep my health at full, and then when I reach a certain point or a certain area in game, I can then go ahead and switch my riff and stay in it while keeping myself and allies alive, and then once done, we can move forward and repeat. For the PvP aspect, it can help with closing off areas and stopping players from moving up, while giving you and your team a full health regen or even a full buff in weapon damage when passing by. Although, issue with this is that players will find another way around this or brute force their way in. And then lastly, we have the Berserker mod that will provide us a boost in damage when we use it and kill something with a super. Um, this perk is more handy for PvP rather than PvE from what I've noticed because of how the stacking effect works. As the build will be getting a lot of orbs of power through the mass work aspect, this can be chained to get super energy quick and fast and constantly have a second to third option available for a damage boost when you need it most. Although the way Tommy's work and having a high energy fire mod 
may override each other at times, but at the same time you can down enemies and players alike a lot more faster than normal. With the build complete, you can pretty much move through mobs at any tier while having constant health regen kicking in the moment it's needed. The build is suitable for content that allows you to face a wide number of enemies at a mid-tier level, such as strikes, gambit, pvp, open world events and all sectors. The build cannot go any further than that, sadly, because of how risky the setup is for the higher tier content, which require more health maintenance than anything else. Ordeal Nightfalls and Vades pose the risk of dying quite a lot with the build because of the modifiers in place and tiered enemies that are more tanky than normal. The build can take damage and absorb it well, but it cannot take a large number of damage in one go as your Rift and Devour may not be able to keep up unless you have the Protective Light mod available as backup, and even then you can still only go so far with the build. You also have the issue of ammo quickly running out. But this has been countered with the Ammo Finder mod for primaries if you utilise that. The final verdict on the build is that it plays fantastic for general content as is a powerhouse when everything in our arsenal are kicking in and helping the boost in performance of the build. Upon countering the overheat perk, we pretty much managed to find an easy way to sustain its high damage feature for a long period and from there made it viable for a number of content. Unfortunately, the build can be easily defeated if a large amount of damage is produced in one go when we are not utilising our options for health regen, which sadly prevents the build usefulness in endgame nightfalls or raids. Still, it's definitely worth using for it alone as it brings something new to the table than ever before, and if you're someone that enjoys exotics that have a both positive and negative effect and you like to try to build around it, this weapon here is probably one of the best to go ahead and experiment with. For, well, from experience, from Warlocks and Titans. But definitely do give this weapon and this whole build a go and see how it plays up on your end. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff. Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you all in the next one.